I first met Kent Everett in the 90s when I showed up at his shop in Atlanta, Georgia to study steel string guitar building. Since then, he and his wife Jeannie have become good friends, and occasionally Kent shows up in Colorado to give master classes to my students at Red Rocks Community College. A couple of those classes, voicing the steel string guitar and adjusting the steel string guitar, have even become instructional DVDs and are being used by luthiers around the world. Kent has been building and repairing guitars for 35 years. He knows what he's talking about. He has built hundreds of guitars over his career, and they are true works of art. Recently, I asked Kent if he would let me ask him a few questions that I think could be beneficial to other luthiers. He accepted my offer, and here's what we discussed. Uh, first of all, Kent, how did you get started in Luthery? You know, it's been so long that, that uh... I have to think back on how the hell it all happened, but basically I was in college and uh, it was costing a fortune to go to college, so I took some time off to decide what to do, traveled around the country, was doing carpentry work, and bumped into a guy who was building instruments up in uh, Vancouver, I'm on Vancouver Island in, in BC in Canada. I was just blown away by it. I mean, I could not believe, I didn't know that it existed, that someone would make a guitar. I figured they all came from factories. So when I saw this guy was making handmade guitars, I mean, it fit everything. It was music, it was craftsmanship, it was uh, tools and jigs, it was the thought process behind it, it was art. And it just my, my interest scale went off the uh, charts with this. So. Was there somebody that uh, inspired you as a builder? Earlier on I came across John Larrabee. I stumbled into his shop, which happened to be close to where I was uh, living at the time, crashing at the time. And uh, when I walked into John's shop, I could not believe he had 11 guys in there and the, the instruments that they were putting out of there. He was, uh, when we were just cutting little diamonds for the fingerboard out of pearl, he was doing curly cues and art deco, art nouveau style and women with wavy hair and eagles with feathers and, and not just one at a time, he was pumping out a lot of them using pantographs and, and uh, templates and it was just phenomenal. So I was blown away by that. And the next guy I got to give credit to is uh, make a long story short, I ended up flat broke back in Atlanta where I'm from and I happened to into a shop where a character named Devon Bogle was working and uh, Devon was the finest craftsman, independent individual craftsman I've ever seen to this day. He had the, so the, these two guys really uh, showed me how high the bar could be, you know, how where you could go. And the third guy I'd have to say would be Wade Lowe because Wade is a, a just a lovely character. I've known him for over 30 years, now, 35 years now. And uh, he has a real passion for wood and craftsmanship. And he showed me it was okay that you, you don't have to hide it. Because I was so young and I was so crazy for it, I was kind of, I thought it seemed like there was something wrong with me. So I was like kind of keeping it to myself. But Wade was completely open with his uh, dysfunction. <laughs> so, so these three guys helped me. They helped me get my feet under myself. So. Um, the next question is, is you know, you've been at this for over 35 years. Yeah, so not quite. Next year is 35. If I make it next year, right. if I'm still here next year. And, and the question I have for you, and you probably ask yourself this many times over the years, is why do you build? What, what's, <laughs> what's your motivation behind? Every morning when I wake up, I go, why am I doing this? No clue. No clue I, I think right. there's a passion, and, and the passion has been there through it all. It's something I don't know what it was. Maybe when I first saw that first guy making a guitar, something clicked. Something went, you know, and something just snapped. And there's a passion there as much as I, uh, uh, you know, all the problems and all the hassles and all the things that go with it, there's still something there. And I can't put my finger on it. It wasn't a reasonable decision. <laughs> so it defies common sense. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's yeah, a drive. Have you sat and thought about it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't think and think. Don't stop and think yeah, about it. Yeah, that's the story. Well, what kind of instruments? Marry the manic depressive stripper. You'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of instruments do you build? I build primarily acoustic guitars. I've built a lot of different things. In the 80s, the acoustic guitar market didn't exist. and I was a younger guy and, and really enjoyed rock and roll music and, and, and I made electric guitars and build uh, some jazz guitars, arch top guitars, mandolins. Around 1990, uh, I decided to de dedicate myself full-time to building. And uh, the Indigo Girls were playing a couple of my guitars. I had some, some local artists that were playing, and the acoustic guitar market was bubbling and moving along. So, so it's a, it's a long answer to your, to your question. I'm known for making steel string acoustic guitars, and I've made uh, 
over well, about 550 steel string acoustic guitars, and with the miscellaneous other stuff, it's over 800 guitars total to this day. And, and I understand that you have a new instrument line coming up, mandolins. The mandolins. I've always made mandolins, and, and thank you for asking, Robbie. <laughs> And uh, this is interesting for me, it's something new, because I'm building a new version of a mandolin. It's not, it's not so left field and uh, unobtainable uh, aesthetically or emotionally, uh, that it's not so, such a unique looking instrument. But what it is, is it looks like a little shrunk down jazz guitar, and with some, some of my modern uh, sculpting, which is a, a, a laid back aesthetic sculpted instrument. But it looks like a little jazz guitar. And it's voiced to be more of a, have a baritone voice, not like that truck going by, it has had more of a tinny voice, more like the crows. <laughs> it has more of a maritone, because I think when people are going to be attracted to this for playing non-bluegrass uh, tunes, uh, maybe Irish music, uh, certainly jazz, single note, uh, uh, you know, uh, Parker lines, or this kind of thing. So, uh, swing, uh, Jethro, uh, uh, Jethro uh, Burns style stuff. So. All right. As a builder, do you think it's important to play? I know that you do play, but do you think that that's an integral aspect of being a builder? Absolutely. Be in fact, that's really where the mandolins are coming in. And I used to, uh, I play a lot of, I played a lot, and I enjoy playing. Um, as I'm uh, getting more beat up, as I'm getting older, it limits what I can play. And I put in a decade or so playing uh, all kinds of stuff. When I was playing jazz music, I made some arch top guitars. When I was playing steel string, I made steel string guitars. When I was playing uh, classical music, I played classical guitars. Because it's something that gets into your soul when you're sitting there every day playing and listening to what you're doing and trying to improve and you're pushing yourself and you have good moments and bad moments. It's becoming part of your DNA and that really serves you well when you're trying to make the instrument to meet that. And it comes back around to the, the mandolins. Um, it's a new product that I'm uh, with the mandolins. I'm making a new type of mandolin, so I have to develop the market as well as making the instrument. It's not an A or F produced established market. This is a little different, so I'm well aware of what I'm getting myself into. The reason I'm excited about the mandolins is I can still play the mandolin. Classical guitar is hurting my shoulder, steel string guitar is hurting my wrist. The mandolin is so comfortable, I can play it an you know, hour, hour and a half without a problem. So what do you know? Now I'm excited about making mandolin. So I think there's a real connection, not only to the finished product, understanding what you're doing, and so you can relate to the customer, you know, what they want to get out of the instrument. Like I say, it becomes part of your your uh, love of what you're doing, but then also uh, it affects what I'm making. I mean, my decisions based on what I'm playing. So. All right, I, another concern that I have, we're at the, the, the Guild of American Lutherans Convention, and uh, this topic has come up while we've been here, is um, a lot of modern building techniques, uh, CNC routers, things like that. Do you think that that is kind of taking the place? Is it, is it uh, removing the artisan or the builder from the final product? I think that using CNC routers really uh, uh, is a hair loss thing. I've noticed that most of the guys that are using CNC's have, have really had a, been losing their hair. So, uh, I don't, other than that, I don't see a real detriment to it. Yes, I think that I think the question is a leading question because I really agree with the, the, the intent of the question, which is, uh, especially with beginners, as I've said in the past, is the CNC is really between you and what you're trying to do. Uh, it, 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 the CNC is no replacement for craftsmanship, so the, the student will say, but it's aggregate to plus or minus one one hundredth of a thousand of an inch, much more than a human being can be. But the guys who, I, I can just say what I've seen the end product of that, the people who have chased the CNC as being the way to uh, create craftsmanship, it locks them up because they can make very precise garbage, a lot of it but it just doesn't happen. I haven't seen it happen. I think the tooling is getting in the way between the person and the wood that they're trying to do. Now, if you already have got that, you can use the CNC as another tool to do marvelous things. But until you have that mind, eye, hand, creating what you're trying to make, until you have that, I think the CNC is really a detriment. It's not a shortcut. It could kill you. Because if people are trying to use the CNC, or even a variety of different kinds of tooling, they're trying to use jigs and templates, and this to, to, to do that eye hand thing, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. They try another jig tool, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. They get frustrated and then they don't keep building. So it can be it can be bad for you. What is your opinion of where we're going with Lutheran? What is, what is the future of Lutheran? I have no is idea. Is there any future? I really don't know. Yeah, that's a really good question. With the Lacey Act, 
who knows who knows what's going to happen we're really with the way the economy is what i do know is people are still buying expensive guitars and i can't believe it i'm happy about it but where it's going from here you know the golden age of blue three i'm so glad that i was in the position i was in when it came around I so i've been so blessed to be able to go through this um, where we're going I, I i don't think any of us know what's happening with anything where's the real estate market going right all right uh, <laughs> If you could give any single piece of advice to aspiring luthiers, what would it be? Sober up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you have it. Single Straight piece forward. of advice to aspiring luthiers is don't expect it to all come very quickly. Don't expect perfection right off the bat. You earn it. Allow yourself to make some mistakes and allow yourself to grow and get better over time. People, get, people either let themselves off the hook. Ah, it's good enough. Go with it. That ain't going to work well for you people don't let themselves off the hook and never can pull the trigger they're afraid to make a mistake both of those can kill you so I would say just just be reasonable uh, you know it, it, allow yourself a growth period I think that would be helpful I, I'll use myself as an example when I went from building uh, you know independent instruments for people and started building full-time what I did was I bought a bunch of uh, laminate uh, walnut and cedar top and made about 50 of these instruments with sat finishes to learn the, I mean, even at that point, I'd already been building for 20 years and I had quite a few uh, famous players. I mean, I was already an established person, but I, I even allowed myself a growth period as I was changing direction, you know. So I asked, so that was what I was suggesting to the budding luthiers, and that is don't expect a lot the first, you know, few guitars. Allow yourself to make mistakes and get better. Maybe put someone else's name on it. O'Brien, I found <laughs> to be a really good name in that peghead. <laughs> Um, I've got a, a list of topics here that I'm going to ask Kent just his opinion on. I'm going to throw out two topics, and he's going to give me uh, one or the other, and we'll just move on to the, uh, to the next one, kind of like a game show topic. So here we go. Uh, dovetail or bolt-on? Dovetail. Dovetail. All right. uh, <laughs> wooden or plastic bindings? Wood. Wood. <laughs> uh, uh, Brazilian or Indian? Lacy Heck. <laughs> <laughs> Spruce or cedar? <laughs> Spruce. <laughs> Pick or finger style? Both. Both. High or low action? Low. low. <laughs> uh, acoustic or amplified? Acoustic. This interview is going to get expensive. Uh, lacquer or French polish? Catalyze your thing. Catalyze your thing. Right. Thin, very thin, very, very thin. Okay. Uh, sunburst or clear or a clear coat? Clear. <laughs> regular or decaf? Uh, one cup of regular, one cup of decaf. There we go. Boxers or briefs? Boxers. At night briefs are in the day. <laughs> <laughs> sound port or no sound port? Pay me sound port. Sound port. As you could tell, Mr. Everett has a lot of experience and has very generously shared some of it with us. If you want to get inspired as a builder, take a trip over to his website to see what beautiful work he does.